Two for Tuesday. Roll that. Hey guys, part one, two for Tuesday. Um, I was very hesitant about uh, doing this. It's uh, something that's very personal, but um, I decided I I'm going to do it anyway. Basically, what I did was I wrote a letter to John Green. He's an author. If you don't know him, he'll look him up. Well worth it. I was actually going to attempt to explain the reason I wrote the letter to John Green. Um, but after reading the letter that I wrote, it, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to read it to you. And uh, if, I, uh, <laughs> if I happen to break down during the letter, I apologize. Okay. Don't mind me if I'm not looking straight at you. I'm just going to read it right off the paper. So, uh, and be patient with me. It's about uh, three pages, right? Okay. Here we go, guys. At 11 years of age, I visited my brother in the hospital. I really didn't know what happened to him. I was only told that he was sick. I was too young to understand, and I never shed a tear. At 12 years old, I was sitting at the kitchen table waiting for my mother to feed me lunch when my brother, uh, who was sitting across from me, began to speak to me. He referred to me as Susan and asked what I was doing here. I just laughed because I was 12 years old, and I was really unaware of what my brother was going through. and. More than likely, I was too young to truly comprehend what was going, what what my brother was going through. In the summer of my 15th year, I came home from school and I noticed my brother's bedroom door open, which was quite strange because he always kept it shut. I entered and I see my brother trying to get up from the bed, but he was ha he wasn't having much luck. He was having a lot of problems. I remember him looking at me and as if he wanted me to help him, or at the very least, he, uh, or at the very least, he wished to communicate something to me. He said, "Pills." It took me a few seconds to realize that the bottle of pills on the bed next, sorry, it took me a few seconds to realize that the bottle of pills next to his bed was open and empty. I proceeded to call my mother. She was at work. She, she called an ambulance and I waited. I visited my brother in the hospital once again and once again didn't truly understand why. I never shed a tear. I was confused. Why would he do such a thing? I, I just didn't understand it. Shortly after my 19th birthday, I received a call from my mother. She said that Darren, that's my brother, was in the hospital and I should come home. I left my friend's house and came home right away. My mother and I went to Montreal General Hospital where my brother was uh, brought to. I was told uh, he had some problems with his heart and he was on a heart machine. I visited several times over the next few days. Although I knew in the back of my head what had happened, no, nobody spoke of it, and still, I never, never cried. The following years seemed to be better. My brother found a girlfriend, he moved away, got a stable job for a while. I think I was about 27 when he moved back. He was no longer working, he was having relationship issues. I really never knew the details because we didn't really talk much, at least not about the details. 
On May 8th, 1997, when I was 30 years of age, the greatest moment of my life came to pass. My son Brandon was born. Now I remember Darren holding Brandon for the first time and thinking, you know, everything is good now. He called Brandon Smiley because even though Brandon was in and out of the hospital and often sick, he always smiled and he always laughed. In late November of that year, on my birthday, I received a call from my brother. He apologized for not being there. He said he was at the hospital again. He told me that earlier he was on the Jacques Cartier Bridge and was contemplating jumping off when a stranger came to him and asked if he needed help. This stranger drove him to the hospital. I never visited Darren in the hospital at that time, but we spoke on the phone at length. I asked him questions, so maybe, just maybe I might understand. I felt sorrow, I still felt confusion, but I never cried. And I never really understood. December 18th, 1997, approximately 6.30 p.m., a knock on the door. I could barely hear it. I was, I was listening to some music, which seemed quite important to me because <laughs> I remember not wanting to open the door so I could finish the song. A second and a louder knock came. I went to the door. I, I remember feeling annoyed, as in how dare somebody interrupt my music. Two police officers were there when I finally opened the door. The first word spoken was a request to lower the music and I thought to myself, who called the police to complain about my music? It, it wasn't even that loud. When I returned to the door, the policeman asked me my name and if I knew Darren Gardner. I answered. He proceeded to inform me that my brother was dead and asked me if I would be able to come to identify the, his body. I was stunned and hesitated. You know that, that thing you do when you need more time to process something. I asked, what? And before he could repeat himself, I said, okay. And I went and got my coat and shoes. December 18, 1997, approximately 7.30 p.m., I was led down a, a nondescript hallway to a nondescript doorway and led to a set of nondescript curtains. A doctor, or at least that's what I perceived him to be, asked me if I was ready, and I remember thinking, no, and I said yes. I'll certainly not go into detail what I saw that day. But I will say that even more than 20 years after, that image is still ingrained into my very being. And suffice to say, it was Darren. I did not shed a tear. I did not cry. I called a friend of my parents because my mother was visiting that night and I informed them. I did not cry. I proceeded to call my father and the mother of my son, and I did not cry. I called my boss at home and informed him I wouldn't be at work, and still no tears. Over the years, I thought back on those days, trying to make any kind of sense out of it, but I didn't understand, I couldn't understand, and I never, ever cried. On February 17th, 2018, in the early afternoon, I had been sick that week and missed a day of work. I was so sick I could no longer speak. And I was uh, reading a book I picked up a while back. I hadn't had a chance to read it yet. It's called uh, Turtles All the Way Down by you, John Green. Not only a favorite author, but also a, a favorite human being. Page 244, and I quote, I wish I understood it, she said. 
It's okay, I said. Nobody gets anyone else, not really. We're all stuck inside ourselves. You're just, like, hate yourself? You hate being yourself? There's no self to hate. It's like, when I look into myself, there's no actual me, just a bunch of thoughts and behaviors and circumstances. And a lot of them just don't feel like they're mine. <sighs> that blurry, almost completely faded image of my brother's face appeared in my mind. He was smiling as if to tell me, now you understand. I cried. Thank you, John. Hey guys. So, uh, part two. Going to uh, take a look at a few pictures I made in preparation for a later shoot. Uh, I just wanted to practice, practice the techniques, practice the lighting, obviously, uh, and practice uh, specifically Photoshop techniques. No matter how many times you've done something, practicing it, if you have the chance, is always a good idea. Repetition. It's all about repetition. The more you do something, the easier it is. And the easier it is, the less you have to think about all the techniques and the more you can think about what's in front of you. So it's a real simple setup for lights. Uh, flash on the backdrop, two lights on the sides, separating the subject from the backdrop adding a little hair light and then one main flash close to the model, big softbox and one flash further away bouncing off the wall uh, to the model's left giving a little bit of fill so it's almost even lighting across the face, it's just ever so slight shadows on the left side so the second image, you'll notice all I did was I took out the main subject, the toolbox, and you'll notice I got my son lying down and he's, and he's just holding the flash in place. Okay, everything else is exactly the same. Now the third image, everything exactly the same except no background flash. Those are the three main images I use. There is another image, which is a second image of my son underneath with a flash. And I used part of that image. It was definitely lit better in one specific place. So I ended up using those four images. The rest was done in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do now, as I said, I'm just going to show you the images uh, uh, one after the other. And then I'm going to show you the final image. And uh, that's it. Roll the video. <laughs> hey guys. Well, that's it. Come to the end of another Two for Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I tried to get through part one without losing it, but uh, I guess I lost it a little bit near the end. But uh, I guess that was the whole reason of it. It was the whole reason I needed to do it. So thanks. So if you watched it, thank you so much for watching it. And, and I appreciate it, guys, so much. So, uh, hey, if you like the video, click the like button, click that subscribe, absolutely free to subscribe to a YouTube video. I make a video at least once a week, and uh, hopefully I'll be making more videos. 
Uh, but for the moment, at least once a week, I'm going to put out a video. So, uh, anyway, I'd just like to thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, have a great week. And I'll see you next Tuesday.